1,000 horsepower, designed to be something like a floating top-notch hotel. It had three funnels, two masts, and was over 800 feet long. The ship was built with a series of watertight compartments. It was said to be unsinkable. It had a capacity to carry 3,000 passengers at uh, and it had a displacement of 45 to 46,000 tonnes. The ship was launched in April, set sail across the Atlantic in that same month. And while crossing the Atlantic, 400 miles from Newfoundland, the ship collided late at night with an iceberg. It was on the forward starboard side. And when it struck the iceberg, it was travelling at an excessive speed, about 25 knots. The iceberg ripped open the hull and damaged so many of the watertight compartments that the ship couldn't survive. The ship sunk bow first within two hours of hitting the iceberg. And due to the fact that it had too few lifeboats, and the quote is, as few lifeboats as the law allowed, more than half of the 2,000 passengers died. All right, what am I talking about? Just about everybody's going to say the Titanic. But it's not. It's actually the story of a ship called the Titan. Not much difference, is there? The Titan. And it's taken from a novel, a totally made-up story, but the novel was written by a man named Morgan Robertson in 1894, 14 years before the Titanic was built. It was written before there were any steel-hulled three-propeller ships ever built. The wreck of the Titan. Similarity between the two ships is just absolutely incredible. Let's have a look. The largest ship ever built, so was the Titanic, both built in April. Three propellers. The Titanic was the first one. Normally they only had two. The Titanic was the first one with three, but the Titan had that. Uh, the greatest ship ever built by men, same claim. Both said to be unsinkable. They could both carry about 3,000 passengers. By the way, when they sank, both had around 2,000 passengers, which is interesting. Um, the Titanic was about 5,000 um, horsepower better off, but that's not a big difference. They were both over 800 feet, watertight compartments. The Titan had a couple more than the Titanic in the story. Um, both sail in April. That's the month that they were launched. Isn't that incredible? Both collided with an iceberg, the same part of the boat. Both, due to excessive speed, both in the North Atlantic. Both sunk within two hours. Both were 400 miles from Newfoundland. How about guessing that one 14 years before it happened? They um, both lost more than half of their passengers. The Titan in the book had said, as few lifeboats as the law allowed. The Titanic in its story says, as few as the board of directors allowed. Not much difference there either. About half the capacity needed. Isn't that an amazing set of, I don't know what, what you're going to call that coincidence? Boy. And of course 2012 was the uh, centenary of the Titanic. And rather strangely in the centenary of the Titanic, um, the Costa, Con um, Costa Concordia, wasn't it, that, uh, that sank off the coast of Italy. Although only, three, uh, only 30 people died in that particular incident, you might remember some of the TV shots and the sheer terror on the faces of a number of the people who were sure they were going to die. Imagine what the footage would have been like if somebody had had a camera on the Titanic. Just imagine. The movie... The Titanic, the great movie, and uh, the many documentaries, I guess, give us a bit of an idea, but, but not the full story. I, I, I wonder, maybe the guy who designed the Titanic read Robertson's book, 
and designed it to be exactly the same, but I don't think he would have designed it to sink at the same time and place. And what's more, I reckon if I'd read that book, I would not have got on the Titanic, okay? <laughs> when I'd seen that list of so far, nope, I'm not taking the risk. I'm not taking the risk. There just weren't enough lifeboats on the Titanic. Not enough lot lifeboats. It's amazing how often man, with, with all of his advanced technology and science and engineering and so forth, thinks that he can produce something that is near perfect. The Titanic, of course, was unsinkable, so they said. It was reported that one of the dock workers had written on the hull, I, even God couldn't sink this ship. And those words were supposedly repeated by the captain later. If you watch the movie, he actually says those words. And, and in our modern, ever-expanding age of technology, many think that we can do just about anything. But I, I wonder if we can do just about anything and ignore the God with whom we all have to do. There's lots of lessons, I suppose, that we could learn from, from the story of the Titanic, but I, I want us to maybe learn one very simple thing this morning, and that is that life can change in a matter of seconds. In a matter of seconds, life can change. One minute there was fine wine and dancing and partying, and the next, for many, there was panic and despair. For many, there was disbelief. For many, their worst nightmare came true. On what was probably the greatest ocean journey imaginable, the greatest holiday that many of them would have, the unthinkable happens. It was unthinkable that it was unsinkable, but it sank. It was absolutely inconceivable that this ship could not happen. This was not meant to happen. Not meant to happen. How things can change so rapidly when we least expect it. I guess the people in New York in September 2001 had another example of how quickly things can change. A beautiful morning until something incredibly tragic happened and took lives but also changed a lot of people's lives forever. Sometimes life is difficult. Sometimes there's an inconceivable contrast when, when things are going incredibly well but then something breaks across it that can change or maybe even end our world forever. I guess there was somebody last night that thought that was happening, a poor bride stuck in a lift in the uh, service club last night on her wedding night. Ah. <laughs> Not a good place to be. <laughs> you know, those on board the Titanic were simply not prepared for what was going to happen. There were insufficient lifeboats. There were ice warnings out, but the captain chose to ignore them and actually increase his speed. Pretty crazy in hindsight. But something even crazier to me was that there were many passengers who refused to get onto the lifeboats. There were people that came out onto the decks and reportedly said, it's too cold out here and went back inside where it was warmer. And so many of the lifeboats actually were lowered into the water and, and sailed away only half full. They only had enough lifeboats for half the people, but some of those lifeboats left half full. And when the ship went down, people in the lifeboats could see people swimming and decided not to go back for them. They were scared that if they went back, their lifeboats would be swamped. So they left them. <coughs> Unprepared, failing to heed the warning. Neither's really smart. On the other hand, there were people who wanted to do anything they could to get into the lifeboat. It was women and children first. So one guy famously dressed as a woman and got onto one of the lifeboats. 
He made it. <laughs> Had to cheat, but he made it. <laughs> and given that our, our hold on life is, at least we have to say, a little tenuous, we know that change can come quickly and that life for us can, can last or not last. The Titanic is just a reminder and, and a warning, in fact, that normality, everything that we know can change in a matter of seconds. We need to be prepared. We need to be prepared. One of my favourite ads going around telly at the moment is the, uh, the, the ad put out by the Rural Fire Service. Do you know the one where they're sitting in the house burning down while ladies... Uh, Making, thinking of making a plan is not a plan, indeed, indeed. And hopefully that's not our uh, disaster recovery plan that we see there. So what is the answer? How can we prepare? How can we prepare for change that comes suddenly? Well, I want to suggest that the best answer is actually change. You see... There's a thing that God calls grace. And that grace I would describe as the best lifeboat that I could possibly imagine. No matter how comfortable the people on the Titanic might have felt, the lifeboat was the place to be when that ship started to go down. You know, the lights were on, the band was playing. In fact, the band played all the way to the end. The report was that they were playing the beer barrel poker just before it went down and they stopped halfway through and began to play Nearer My God to Thee. And that's what they were playing as it sunk beneath the water. The lifeboat's the place to be. And the ship of life, we never know when we're going to hit a berg or something. But the Bible says that anyone who receives Jesus is changed instantly into a brand new creation. And this is why change is the best preparation for change. A new creation, a new person with, with hope, with purpose, with destiny. And I believe that the thing that God wants for each of us constantly is to know that we have hope and that we have purpose and that we have a destiny. I think there are so many people in the world today who have lost that, who have lost real hope, who have lost their real purpose and haven't thought a great deal of their destiny. The Christian message is, is often seen just to be about eternity, you know, about heaven after you die. And, and certainly that's a true aspect of the Christian message and one that I would never forget and one that I wouldn't want to not tell people about. But that's not the whole of the Christian message. Certainly we need to be prepared for eternity. That's for sure. But God wants us to receive his gift of life now, that is, to get into the lifeboat, so our eternal destiny can be changed. Obviously, we can change our eternal destiny to heaven by being in relationship with him. But there is a lot more to it than that. The change that God brings into our life when we trust him actually affects us now. The change doesn't just happen when we die. It happens now. So many people think that the Christian message is all about when you die. And so they say, well, when I'm getting close to the end, then I'll think about it. That's unwise for two reasons. One, because we never know when we're going to be close to the end. It's nice when, when people live to a hundred and... How old was your grandmother, Chris? hundred and... hundred and five. It's nice when they can get to a hundred and five. I used to often tell people that just a few weeks back we celebrated my uh, great-grandfather's hundred and third birthday. People go, oh, unfortunately he couldn't be there. He... <laughs> He died when he was 56. <laughs> now it's nice if we, if we know we're going to, going to last it long, but we don't always know. We just don't always know. 
So it's unwise not to prepare because we don't know. But the other reason it's unwise is because we can miss out on so much in life that God wants us to have. Jesus brought change to many, many people. To the leper, he brought healing. And today, he still heals. To the blind, he brought sight. And today, he still brings sight to the blind. To the deaf, he brought sound and he does the same today. To the dead, he brought life and he does the same today. Those who came to Jesus were changed and he does the same today. On the day of Pentecost, to a group of, of fearful followers gathered in, in, a, in, in a room trying to hide from the religious leaders of the day, he gave them power, he gave them boldness and he still does the same today. Because you see, Jesus has never changed and never will. And to any who reach out to him, he still offers salvation. And he offers salvation that brings incredible change. And it only takes a simple touch from him. And that's a great thing. And I want to encourage you this morning to make sure you're prepared. Don't be standing on the deck hoping it won't go down. You know, people who were standing on the deck when they were given their life jackets on the Titanic, the reason I think some of them went back inside because they thought it was warmer, because some of the guys who were putting life jackets on them said, it's just precautionary, you'll be back on board for breakfast. Well, what I'm talking about, when I talk about now and eternity, it's not, not just in case. I know for sure that Jesus changes life now. And given that he does that now, I know the rest of his promises stand secure as well. And, and he can just, no matter what condition our life is in, whether we're great people or terrible people. I've met people who think that they're, they're so good they don't need God. And I've met people that reckon they're so bad that God couldn't help them. They're both wrong. God can take us and change us no matter what state we're in. There's a famous old story, a poem. And it goes like this. Slightly more modern version. It had seen better times, the old poor violin. So it hardly seemed worthwhile for the auctioneer to waste much time. So he picked it up with a smile. How about a bid for the old violin? Who'll start with a bid for me? A dollar. A dollar? Who'll make it two? It must be worth two. Two? Who'll make it three? Three dollars. Three dollars? Once? Three dollars, twice, going. But from the back of the room, a young man walked up and he picked up the old violin. He wiped the dust and he played a tune that, that would make all of heaven sing.
music stopped. And the auctioneer with a voice now quiet and low said, now what am I bid for the old violin? And he held it up with the bow. A thousand dollars. Do I hear two? Two thousand? Do I hear three? Three thousand once? Three thousand twice going? Gone, said he. Some people cheered and others said, we don't understand what changed its worth. And someone said, it was the touch of the master's hand. And it's a bit like people whose lives out of tune who feel that they just never win. They're not much worth to the world around, just like the old violin. They work, pay the mortgage, and never quite feel there's really enough to live on. The hammer is raised. Life's auctioneer calls going. Almost gone. But the master comes. Life's made worthwhile and people just can't understand life's real worth and the change that is brought by the touch of the master's hand. As we come this morning to dedicate some children, we come to celebrate life we come to reflect on the absolute awesome responsibility that God has placed in the hands of, of parents in raising and directing a child's life. But it's also a time for us to pray that they will know the touch of the master's hand on their life. So that when they face the issues of life, those, what we might describe, those titanic struggles that we all face from time to time, they will know that their life is eternally secure in a living relationship with Jesus. And in this life, there's certain rites of passage. Some are connected with the passage of years. You know, you, you work to get to school when you're five, and then you wait till you get to 16, and then you can leave school. Then you get to 17 when you get your driver's license and the first taste of freedom, and then you get booked and find the price of freedom. Then you get to 18 and, and you, you legally can call yourself an adult. Then you get to 25 and you don't have to pay as much for insurance. <laughs> rites of passage. There's other rites of passage that are connected to things like your first car. Talking to some people yesterday, they had a nice HQ for a wedding, nice HQ Holden, and I said, in 1970, my first car was an FJ Holden. I bought it for 75 bucks. And when the stub axle broke, we chucked the car away. And if we'd kept it, it would have been worth a fortune. Rites of passage, your wedding day. And then the birth of the child. And then you go through the cycle all again. Only through their eyes. There's a few other rites of passage connected with time. There's your 40th birthday. And then there's your 50th birthday, which comes about two weeks later. <laughs> there's a few other things that mark passage of time, some that are inappropriate. Like on holidays recently, we went somewhere and the girl at the counter clearly an inconsiderate and half-blind person gave me a senior's discount. <laughs> Cheeky little thing. <laughs> Didn't ask for it either. <laughs> Rites of passage. How life changes from the innocence of babyhood. Whoa! Ah, yes. But Jesus had an attitude towards children. I'm just going to read this passage from Matthew. About that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, 
which of us is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a small child over to him, put the child among them, and then he said, I assure you, unless you turn from your sins and become as little children, you'll never get into the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, anyone who becomes as humble as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And anyone who welcomes a little child like this on my behalf is welcoming me. But if anyone causes one of these little ones who trusts in me to lose faith, it would be better for that person to be thrown into the sea with a large millstone tied around their necks. That's pretty solid. That, that's a heavy statement. Jesus really had something important to say about children. But, but the thing that was most important, that when people come to trust in him, he doesn't stand for anything to happen to them. And that means whether we're young or old. Putting our trust in Jesus is so important. But let me say to everyone this morning, if you are a parent, whether you're a single parent, whether you're a parent or a couple of parents who both have to work or whether um, one gets to work and one stay at home, no matter what, it's always important just to be there for, for the kids. The absent mother, absent father is often, far too often, will produce a, a, an angry teenager. And what they're looking for is love and acceptance. So many kids out there today are looking just for love and acceptance. And, and I think it's, it's important for anyone with kids to make sure that your kids get plenty of love. Plenty of love. Be there. Be available. Look for teachable moments. And watch for them because they sneak up on you, those teachable moments. They come when you least expect it. Now, your kids are experts on you. Have you ever, I know I have, have you ever shuddered when you've seen your kids do something and go, that was like me? <laughs> Sometimes you can be proud with them and say, oh, you got that from me. <laughs> but there are times where we do not want to own what they do. Kids will imitate your behaviour. We had a wedding here yesterday and, and they had all the pictures inside because it was too wet for them. And, and, and one of them, there was a, just sitting over here, there was a, a, a mum just holding a little baby who was about, I think she said, just on 12 months old. And every time somebody went and said something to the child or did something, the child would try and imitate it. It was... was I, I'm not saying this in a negative way. You know how a parrot will try and imitate? That's what this little kid was doing, and he's doing it a lot more efficiently. <laughs> and it's amazing. Kids will imitate you, particularly they're going to imitate your, their parents. They become experts on you. And um, I, I want to say that in a world where, where decency and morality and Christian values are definitely declining, I want to encourage you and challenge you to live a good example before children and give them an opportunity to get to know God in a personal way. And anyone here this morning that doesn't know, any adults that don't know Jesus in a personal way, I encourage you to find him. Let's introduce you to him. It's not a matter of belonging to a particular religious group or church or anything else. It's a matter of knowing Jesus personally. That's the thing that changes life and that's the best thing you can have to pass on to children. Our kids are precious. And we have to understand that, that we've been given in, in their young age a window of opportunity to affect and to influence them. Now likewise as a church, we want to be around to support and to, to provide uh, a support base for parents and, and to help them in, in pointing their kids to get to know God personally, to come to know Jesus. We, we certainly want to do that. But this morning, what we're going to do, we, we're going to, um, I think we've got totals eight children we, we're going to pray for this morning and an adult. And um, I just think it's a great thing for us to be able to bless kids and, and pray that God will will bless their life. So Chris and Nick and Ruth, if you'd like to, to come.
And I'm not sure. It's going to be the, the simplest way. Why don't we... Now, there's, we'll take the two mums who've got one edge. All right. So we'll, we'll, uh, we'll go that way first and then we'll, we'll grab the family with six. <laughs> okay, so do you want to come up? What about a grandparents here as well? Yeah, two grandparents. Grandparents as well. Never forget grandparents. Amen. <laughs> Seriously, you know, um, we live in a generation where um, it's, it's quite an amazing thing, actually, but uh, in recent years, statistics are showing this and, and cases are showing that that a lot of, of young people are skipping a generation in terms of influence on their lives. That is, their, their, the greatest influence in their life doesn't come from their parents, but from their grandparents. So grandparents are important. We never want to forget grandparents. I, I think they have such an important role in the, in the lives of children. And um, I want to in, encourage every grandparent. Okay, I'm one. That's good. good thing to be. And I want to really encourage you as grandparents the, the opportunities that you have uh, in influencing a little life. What do you reckon? What do you reckon? Hey, 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 hey. Well, at least that's a grin. That's a little bit better than, better than a snarl, isn't it? Okay. Now, what's... Okay, this is Lexi Jean. Lexi. Woo! Woo! Well, we're going to pray for you, Lexi. And we're going to see what happens if I pick you up. This is going to be interesting. Whoa! You can have a good look at Chris. Keep your eye on her. She's better looking. Better paper. Well, Dad's got a beard, so that, that won't frighten her then. Yeah. I haven't got much more, so don't knock it. <laughs> okay, let's just pray right now. Father, we thank you for Lexi and we thank you, Father, that we can bring her before you this morning and we can dedicate her to you, knowing that, God, your heart is to bless children. And so we bring her to you right now. We speak your uh, hand on her life, that touch of the Master's hand on her. Lord, bless her and let her life be lived long and full and may she know you. Above all else, may she know you. May she find your purpose. May she find hope. And know that she has a destiny designed for her, especially in this life. So Lord, we thank you for her. We celebrate her life. And we commit her to you. We dedicate her to you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Um, Nick, if you could grab a mic or... Grab a microphone there, thanks. And, and maybe, maybe Nick will uh, we'll get you working a little bit in a minute. Maybe Ruth, how about you pray for the parents? Lord God, I thank you for these two parents. Lord, that you bless this beautiful little girl. Lord God, I thank you that that yeah, you've seen their hearts and Lord God, I know sometimes the idea of being a parent's daunting and Lord God, I just pray that you would give them your wisdom, your encouragement. Lord God, that you put people around them who can support them. And Lord, I just pray that, that as they um, 
are with Lexi throughout her, her, her journey, throughout her life, Lord God, that, that they would be a source of inspiration, great role models, Lord God. And I pray that you would bless them in every way, Lord God, with provision and just with, um, with boundless patience, <laughs> Lord God, just with, um, yeah, with, with your love and, and your peace. Amen. Amen. There you go. Yeah, don't cry when you go back to mum. That would be terrible. <laughs> Great. Like you did. Yeah. <laughs> Bless you. Bless you guys. And, and as I said, as grandparents, I just think it's such an important place that, that we have. And I say we because, like I said, I'm one. And um, I, I, I can't stress enough how important that is. So God bless you guys. And great family. You should be proud. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Good, on you. Good, on you. Good to see the red carpet too. Thank you, Dad. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Um. Now I think it's—is it May? It was the other one that's on. All right. Yep. I can see Dad there too. Yep, Dad's coming. Now I know there's at least one grandparent. for May Elise. Lord, we just thank you for this uh, beautiful little girl, Lord, and I just pray that God in all of her days, Lord, that God, she would uh, be able to walk with you, Lord, and come to know you in her life. Lord, we just pray that your hand of protection would be on her, God, and that she would come to know the, the future and the hope that you have in store for her, God. Lord, we just ask that she would be blessed, God, in, in everything that she puts her hand to. Lord, and that she'd walk with you. And uh, God, we just commit her to you this day. Thank you for her. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let, let me take Bub for a minute. Thank you. How's that? Thank you, the mum and dad. Lord, I thank you that their desire is to bring her before you. And Lord, to dedicate her to you. Lord, it shows their heart. And Lord, I pray that you'll lead them on and that you'll draw them closer every day to yourself. And Lord, when there are questions on their heart, Lord, they will cry out to you and hear your answer in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray you'll give them wisdom beyond their years, that you'll give them understanding, Father God, in every situation that presents itself. As May Lise, Lord, grows into um, a young girl through her teenage years as a young woman, Lord God, that they will be able to lead her in the ways of the Lord. We ask your blessing to be upon them in health and strength also. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Now, little May, see these people down here? They're real important. Really important. Absolutely. They are so important. And they're going to have a lot of impact on you. So you listen to them, won't you? <laughs> hey. why, why, doesn't, why doesn't one of the grandmas take up? I can't. Jane will have to. You want to take it back to a seat? Yeah. There you go. See you later. That was really good. They're so well behaved this morning. That's wonderful. <laughs> See you later. Bye. Okay, now we've 
got a whole family. Isn't that absolutely wonderful? I, I just think that is so great that we're going to just be able to bless this family and, and really believe that God's going to do some good stuff in their life. I might just say that um, with, with May, they, they've, this week they, they've uh, been really hectic because they're about to move and they um, actually uh, dedicated, um, I've forgotten her name. No, the other one. Lex. Edie. Your, your first baby. Evie. Okay. <laughs> and so um, that, was a, that seems to be a while ago, but to you it's probably yesterday, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Two years, is that right? Two years. Oh, goodness. Okay, so let's see who we've got. We've got Samuel. We've got William. Lachlan, Eli, Grace, and we've got Dad, Jason. And how about you all come up and, and again, grandparents too? Do we have great grandparents on this one? <laughs> if there's any here. Okay, guys. Oh, look at this. Oh, oh. Yeah, definitely got a bit of muscle there, mate. Well, that's a good thing. Yeah. That's a good thing. <laughs> so we just got you to stay. <laughs> Isn't it great? Isn't it great? You know, let, 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 me, let me just say something specifically um, to, to all of you kids. You know, oftentimes when we come to, to something like this, you, you think, oh, we don't want to be treated as kids, you know, we're not babies. And you're not, okay? What, what I'm wanting to say to you I'm including your dad in, all right? And that is that, that in, in coming and um, being dedicated to God, the idea is not that you suddenly be, belong to a particular religious group or anything like that. It doesn't work like that. I know some places it does, but we never think like that. What we, what we want to do is, is to encourage you to find the greatest hope and purpose that it's possible to have. And you might think those sort of words are way out there somewhere, but they're not. They're a lot closer than you think. And, and even a little muscular fellow like this, oh, look at this. Look at those muscles, mate. Even a little bloke like that, you know, God has actually designed that little fellow for a purpose. And God has a destiny for him. And, hello? Hello, Grace. Grace, what a tremendous name. Grace. Wow. You know, God has a lot of grace. And I hope he gets to know you really well too. And you get to know him because that's more important. But, you know, God has a, a purpose for every one of you. And, and you were designed to be somebody special. <laughs> you know, I want, I want to tell you something. I can tell you about this fella. Never seen him before, but I can tell you this about him. He already thinks he's special. But the trouble is, the trouble is when he gets a little bit bigger, he forgets. And so I want to remind all of you, even the grandparents, that you're special. Okay? You are very special people because God has a purpose for you. Okay? Where's the, the names? Because we'll, we want to make sure that when we pray, we have all your names in there. Okay? So I'm just going to pray for the whole family. And um, you guys just want to gather around behind them there. I folded it down one early. So we've got Maisie, which is Maisie. Your 
Maisie. Okay. Should have told me. I had that turned over one too early. And Samuel. 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 Got to get him right. Do you know there's a famous bloke in the Bible named Samuel? Yes. Ah, he was. He was a. He was a pretty special character. William. Yeah, you look like a William. <laughs> you really do. Yeah. You can see the cheeky grin. Most definitely. Lachlan. Lachlan. <laughs> Do you know what? I used to live... Uh, it was terrible. People would say, you live on the Lachlan River. I said, no, I didn't. I just lived near it because I'd get wet if I lived in it. Okay? <laughs> but I lived near the Bull Lachlan. Hey. So you must be famous as well. Oh, I like this one. Eli. <laughs> Eli. Whoa, that's a pretty big name. It's only got three letters, but it's an enormous big name because it reminds people of God. And Grace, we've already said, what a tremendous name. And who else have we got? We've got Dad, Jason. Now, I, I want to tell you, I don't know if you know this, but here's something that you may not know that actually is a close link between... One son and one dad. Okay? Eli is a word in, in Hebrew that has to do with God. And Jason is actually the Nordic name for Jesus. There's Jason and um, obviously um, people in the Latin countries often have the name Jesus or Jesus as a, as a Christian name. And they're exactly the same name. So there you go. Yeah. Whoa. That's, that's really putting it on. Yeah. It's like, you know, there, was a, there was a little kid. Well, it wasn't a little kid, sorry. He, he, was, he, was, um, he turned 18 and he had long hair. And you know, he went into his dad one day and he said, Dad, I want the keys of the car. And his dad said, I'll tell you what, we'll make a deal. You can have the keys of the car when you get your hair cut. And he says, ah. Oh. He said, look, have a look at all the pictures. Jesus had long hair. And his dad said, yeah, and he walked everywhere. <laughs> so... Well, the picture's got it wrong anyway because you don't have long hair, so it's all right. Okay. Okay, mate, let's, let's pray for you guys and, and really believe that God's going to, to bless each one of you. Okay, Father, as we come to dedicate a whole family to you, Lord, our, our heart is that your blessing is going to be on each and every one of them. Lord, we want to ask you that that you would show yourself to be real to them. So they don't just hear stories or hear someone talking about it, but, but they actually find you to be real for themselves. And so, God, we just commit them to you. We bless you for them. We thank you for each life. We, we thank you, Lord, for Macy. We thank you for Samuel, for William, for Lachlan, for Eli and for grace, and of course we, we thank you for Dad, for Jason. And Lord, we believe that your blessing is going to rest on each one of them throughout their life. And I pray that God, that they will find you and find you as one who loves them and cares for them. So Lord, I pray for parents that you'll give them wisdom. But Lord, I pray that the kids will have a heart that's open to know you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, in praying for all of the family, we've left out mum. <laughs> mum was in. <laughs> and uh, you should have been down there too. <laughs> mum and Jessica. Well, and, and Grant, look, we're, we're going to... Chris, how about you pray for mum and Jess because they were standing down here. All right. Yeah, that's Jessica there. So, and pray for mum as well. So. Yeah. 
Lord, I thank you for Jess, Lord. She could have chosen not to be here, but she's chosen to present herself also with her family, Lord God, before you. And Lord, I pray that you will honour that. You see that today, Lord God, and you see her heart. And Lord, as she grows into womanhood, Lord, I pray that you'll whisper secrets and great truths into her heart and mind, Lord, and satisfy the longings in her heart. I pray that she'll turn her eyes and her heart towards you all the days of her life, Lord God. Bless this beautiful young woman, Lord, in Jesus' name. And for dear mum, Lord, you've chosen her to be the mother of these children. You've chosen to bless her, Lord, with a quiver full of beautiful children, Lord God. So you, give, you will give her capability. You will give her everything she needs for every day, Lord, that she looks after these children. I thank you, Lord, that you have um, deposited a great body of truth within her heart, Lord God. And I thank you that she will um, reach out after you, Lord, that she will long for you. Lord, during the night, Lord, when she thinks about her children and puzzles over them and what to do, Lord, you'll just drop answers into her mind, Lord, and she will know that they are from heaven, they are from you, and she will give you thanks, Lord God. Lord, meet her every physical need as well. Lord God, and may she lead her little family with her husband in all truth. In the name of Jesus, amen. Well, you know, Chris just prayed about um, and mentioned a quiverful. That the story on that is that um, in ancient times, the royal, the royal quiver with the bow and arrow, they had seven. Oh, really? Right? And... Uh, <laughs> You know, that, that was the royal, the royal quiverful was seven. So, you're royalty. <laughs> hey, that's, that's really special. Yeah. Hey, congratulations. And, and look, we, we want to encourage you, you guys to, to really find the heart that God has for your kids too. And, and I know that he just wants to bless them and make them really all that, that he intends them to be. Okay. God bless you guys you. and grandparents again. Thank you. Thank you. Bless you. Thanks. Thank you. Nice Thanks for being here. Yeah. Okay, if we can have the um, musos just up again, we're just going to finish off with a song. And um, when, when we finish that, um, we'll go out and have a cuppa and you're all most welcome and as we said we trust everybody's going to stay this morning because there is a great deal to consume okay now the, the, um, the before church we had a, a, a prayer team praying in there and um, they feel that God has just put something in their heart um, uh, there's a lady uh, they feel that there's a lady with, in her 30s with brown hair having relationship problems between mother and daughter. If that happens to be you, please come and talk to the prayer team because they want to pray with you. And someone facing a career change is uh, looking for work and wanting to know God's purpose. So if either of those are you, please um, come and, and have the prayer team just spend some time with you and pray. If you've got any other needs this morning, the team would be happy to pray for you. And look, if you're visiting this morning, that's, that's fine. If you have a need, please come in and they're not going to do anything strange. They're just going to pray with you, okay? That's, that's all it is. They just want to pray God's blessing on you. If you've got a physical problem, they want to pray for healing for you. And, and we can believe that God can do just that. So we're just going to sing, then we'll just close off in prayer and then head out for a cuppa and the prayer team will be available then.
faith and mercy for me. Everyone needs forgiveness, kindness of the Savior, the hope of nations. We're going to bless each of those children that we prayed for this morning. And Lord, as we go, we pray that we'll be conscious of your presence with us. And Lord, that your blessing is going to be ours throughout this week in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you heaps. Cut us straight through. And great team will be available here right now.